All right, well, it is nice outside. It's a Friday, it's slow inside the arcade. So I figured I'd start on a little project here today. Uh, this is gonna be track and field. Uh, if you can't tell by the shape of the cabinet, um, someone got this cabinet and sprayed like that kind of splattery paint, bed liner. You can see where uh, someone's washed through it there to see if they could get to the, where the blue is. There's a nice sticker on this side. I started peeling it and it was it was just covered in uh, the same black paint here, as you can see. But uh, man, it looks like it's got a nice piece of white laminate underneath it. I'm hoping that's what that is. And then maybe I can get some of this spray off. I gotta go all white here and then all blue on the inside. So, or on the front side anyway. So anyway, we got, we got most of the parts to build this out. Let's see where I get. Okay. We are here super early. It's a Thursday morning, so we're gonna open later today, but it's about 6.30 in the morning. I've cleared off one side of the track and field. I've cleared off the other side of the track and field. And what we had to clear off was this, I don't know if you can tell there, but it has that kind of grainy paint. Somebody did the whole interior. You can actually see it here real well. So I'm gonna, this coin door, I'm gonna take it completely off anyway. So that's why I just pulled that bolt there. Uh, I'm having to strip all that black, like grit sandy paint that someone did all this. I'm about to repaint this blue. And uh, so we still got a ways to go, but it's coming along. I'm feeling, I'm not saying I'm gonna feel the finish line, but I'm starting to pick up speed on this. And I got so many cool projects to do uh, back here in the back. I mean, there's burger time poking out right there. Hey, these things wanna get done. They wanna make it to the floor. I'll tell you, I got a coin door for this. It's a century coin door right here that uh, you know, I'm excited about. It has the raised lettering. So we'll redo this coin door and this would be the coin door we put on it. Uh, but anyway, so I think that, um, like I said, I think we're uh, a weird box in the back. I may just keep that box. I don't know. It's the back of the game. I'm not that worried about it. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you gotta get this T molding off. I'm gonna take it back outside today and try to get more of that black scraped off of the blue area there so i can get nice a nice fresh start this all needs to be blue on the inside and you can see the blue coming through had just a great paint coat on it whoever did this really is creating nightmares i don't know why but anyway that's our track and field that's the progress so far and yeah, we're taking it slow on this one well i got this side cleaned off pretty good I mean, it's still black and gross, but you know, we're all, it kind of matches the other side now. There's a little bit of sticker there from the last video. You probably saw that. I'm trying to get all this stuff off of it, which is the kind of gravel spray paint. <laughs> uh, and it's had a beautiful blue coat that's just been ruined by this spray stuff here. And they sprayed it everywhere, so I'm having to get all in here. So this is a long way back on this one, but uh, we'll have a track and field one day. And you can, if I back up real far, you can kind of get a feel for track and field there. <laughs> anyway, we'll see where we get next time. All right, well, uh, we've done a little more work on the track and field cabinet. Uh, let's take a look and see what we've done. So if you look here, this side, we talked about this in a little bit, but this is what I did this morning. I cleaned all the, you see it looks black now. Underneath the blue was black laminate, or under, I should say, underneath the gravel black and the nice blue was this black laminate, which is really cool, because this is gonna get me a pretty smooth surface still. I'm gonna have to like get into the wood here. So I got a little Bondo work to do, and then I'm gonna have to go and match this blue. I'm hoping someone, on the uh, forums and whatnot, we'll have a match for that blue, but I'm actually pretty excited here. Uh, we're coming together, and I mean, this was a lot of work. Look at all this junk. Gotta clean up all these paper towels and everything, but uh, yeah, I can get, get in there and do some Bondo work, get some primer on this thing, and uh, you know, we'll uh, 
be back in business hopefully so anyway until next time all right we're deep in the bowels of the back room here still working on the track and field um so we've talked about a few things uh one of the things I come across when I was just about to start bonding and all that fun stuff, excuse me, getting over a little summer cold here, uh, is I found that this piece right here that the marquee sits on was completely wrong. This is what was in it. Uh, it had a hole, like someone covered the... Sorry, I'm one hand in this here. It's covered like a speaker hole up, and it's kind of a janky, just stuck in there piece of wood. It's in there like this. Hold on. Again, one hand in it. It's in there kind of like that. And uh, I just didn't like the way it looked, so I cut me a new piece of laminate, you know, to kind of match all the other laminate that's on this thing. It had this uh, grill on it, too. This is some shaky camera too yeah it had this kind of like speaker grill thing on it so i didn't like that so here we are and now we got a nice little piece of wood so hopefully this whole cabinet is coming together by the time you see this whole video here so that's where the marquee goes well we're back in the lab today there's gunner he's hanging out with me it's a Tuesday, so we got the arcade shut down. This is the track and field cabinet we've been working on. I am just about to start some popsicles and some dowels, and we got to correct this corner a little bit in this bottom. Gonna put some Bondo on it uh, and see how we do. So we'll uh, get a little pre-shot there. I have to do the other side too, but not nearly as bad as this one. So let's just get the big stuff out of the way first. All right, let's see how we did. So obviously this is this wow can't talk obviously this isn't sanded but uh we got some bondo there got some nice straight edges popsicle sticks <laughs> get them at your local hobby lobby so we're gonna have to sand this all down this whole side's gonna have to be painted i had to scrub that black off and you know you can just only get so much out of this crevices of the laminate but uh all in all did a there's a big old cut down the middle here and a don't want that to show through the side arch, so I did a little bondoing there too. Some of the other little edges, but uh, hopefully we can do the other side next. Oh snap, all the bondo is done, finally. A lot of little bondo on the edges, big scratches. So we're gonna have to do some sanding. Did the front today, bottom edge. That corner's ready to get sanded down. That corner's ready. So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go outside and sand it. We got all the bondo the inside up there too. There's a lot of scratches and holes in this whole thing. So, uh, you know, it's making a comeback. Would you look at that? Old track and field starting to look good. Uh, I think I'm gonna paint the sides with a roller. I know that's probably against what y'all would think to do, but I'm trying and I just can't get an even coat now for the blue. <clears throat> I got a nice even coat for the blue and it looks electric out here. And that's the original blue inside. And then this is just a really good match. Uh, I saw somebody online use this color here and uh, I really like it. Anyway, our track and field cabinet's coming along. Nice restore. You know, there's that corner down there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna roll the white on, but uh, so far, so good. I love the way this looks. This came out great. All right, Arcade Faithful, been watching this video. We are finished with the paint. Paint's still wet. I literally just put the paint brushes away, uh, or the roller, I should say. So we had sprayed the front in the blue, which I think looks fantastic. There's a little shelf I had to build because it was missing that. So I'm trying to make it look a little nicer. And then we got us a nice, it's our second coat of white. I did the first coat yesterday. So yeah, it's, I, man, I think we're, uh, 
I'm excited. I mean, hopefully, you know, this is Saturday mornings before we open. So I can't stay here too long, but uh, yeah, I think this looks really pretty nice. Came out real good. So hopefully Monday, me and my dog will be up here by myself, uh, ourselves, I should say. Wife is working and we're gonna get some, uh, hopefully some artwork on this thing. I'll have to set the artwork out this weekend. God, that blue is just really nice. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Well, it's early, but I was too excited because we have all the paint and Bondo work that we're gonna do on this cabinet finished. And I got it propped up here. We're gonna put side art on. Man, I'm gonna try to get some progress done today. We got a nice clean slate. Look, even my dog's tired. So sad. He's got up so hey, got it. Look at this side art. This is from Phoenix Arcade, and it just looks phenomenal. So I can't wait to see this on the game. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see what we can do. I don't know y'all, looking pretty sharp. Man, I just think that looks great. Came out good. All right, so then, <clears throat> since I have this up on its hindquarters here, I know there's some feet issues here. We got this little janky foot right here. Got a gunner. Checking it out. God, you're so close. Anyway, so we got that action. We got this one. You know, got this jank foot here. I don't know what's going on with that. And this one here, I can see what they did. It almost looks like there's a light bulb stuffed in there. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, um, let's see what I can do. I don't think I can use that one. This one. I mean, I don't want to use that foot, but this one's bracket might be all right. This one's bracket looks pretty good. I'm so zoomed in. And this one, pretty good. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh man, side art, looking awesome. And now the other side is done. Man, I don't know, looks pretty tight. I like it. Uh, down here, foot issue. So we got us a new foot, a new foot. This one actually has the new plate on it as well. Um, this was the old one. And I was right there, it was, you know, it's kind of jank, but here. had a light bulb in it. How weird is that? It was just uh, right inside there. So strange. Anyway, uh, new foot. And then old foot. I only had three feet when I went back and looked. So sad. Anyway, uh, it should be a little more stable than that janky stuff there. So, all right, I'm about to see if we can put some tea molding on it. I think I'm going red. So you purists are gonna be angry at me, probably. I keep doing that, red tea molding, red tea molding. I don't know why I like red tea molding so much, but it's gonna have that red, white, and blue look, and you know, got all that blue and all that white, so why not a little bit of red? You know, pinstripe this thing a little bit. And uh, y'all can argue and be mad at me in the uh, comments, but oh well. We'll see what we can do. All right, so I'm trying to figure out on this tea molding. So I saw the red, and I'm like, oh, it's awfully flashy. But you know, it does do the red, white, and blue thing really well. And then I was like, well, let me try the black. And then I put the black on, try to make it look like it did classic. God, it just looks out of place or boring. So I don't know. I totally don't know on this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? It just looks... Why? I don't know why it looks out of place. Like, why does black look out of place? Just because everything on the cabinet's blue and white and red. All right, guys, I, as flashy as it looks, I think I gotta go red. I just gotta red this bad boy out. And if I hate it at the end, I can always go back. It's just team molding. So I don't know. That's uh, 
I guess this will be a great debate down in the, the comments, which will be fun. You know, it's like, I like doing things original if I can, but you know, when you do a little extra sometimes, it just looks good. Uh, you know, there's other games in here. You know, I stuck with what they were supposed to look like when I restored them. Uh, but sometimes that team molding helps them pop, you know. So I don't know. I, uh, I think we're going to go red. All right, let's see how this turns out. It, this should be fun. All right, so we went red. Uh, I like it a lot. So mm, probably going to catch some hate for this one, but that's okay. You know, uh, I think it came out really neat. You know, and it really looks good on the cabinet. Maybe they didn't re do red back then because uh, they didn't have it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's that whole lot of black or something. But uh, what do y'all think? I mean, this thing's coming along nicely. Um, I would, I'd love to get it working today. Like actually get all the stuff in it. A uh, coin door is gonna be a while. I have a century coin door with the, you know, the like the embossed letters, the letters that stick out that go there. But it doesn't have the frame, or the frame is on a cabinet that's way deep in the back. So, I don't know. So, to, right now, I am doing the bolts. I kinda wanna put these bolts back in it. And they were, you know, they look rough. You know, they're pretty gnarly. I don't know if the original bolts were black. It looks like they were, kinda had the, I don't know, some sort of darkened glaze on them maybe. I don't know. See how that doesn't look black? Looks like it might not see. Anyway, so I'm just shining up all the heads of them and then I'm gonna, that's how I'm gonna put them back on. Shine them up with the sandpaper here in this drill. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, look at it. Pretty cool. It's gonna look cool in the arcade. All right, so I'm getting rid of the last remnants of uh, splatter paint that whole cabinet was covered in. I'm gonna sand this all down and then I'm gonna paint them black. Let's do it right here. I just sanded a piece. So, just get it nice and get it back to the bare metal so I can paint it black and it'll be nice and smooth instead of gravelly. Gunner! What are you doing, buddy? It's an arcade dog right there. Look at them. Oof. <laughs> All right, we've sanded those parts, letting them dry. I went ahead and painted them. It's time to populate up. Put me a bag together. So this track and kill them, sort of. Uh, put me a bag together. I need to populate this control panel. So here's some more progress. All right, so all kinds of fun stuff. First, this takes a lot longer than I thought it was going to because I had to actually put two screws in actually build out each leaf switch assembly here. Uh, they all came separate, so it was like 20 screws. And then I got to putting the buttons on. So uh, I opened up my bag, as you can see there, and all the other little bags. And I already had these blue and red buttons, but I've had those for a long time. I got them in on like a lot off of eBay. And uh, first thing I noticed is, oh my God, I don't have white buttons, but I remembered I ordered some white buttons and that's where these came from. So, so I got new white buttons and then I have these older red and blue buttons. And I started putting them on and what happened, first thing I noticed is, see there's a little notch. See that little notch right there? Hold on, see it? See it right there? So on that side too. That fits in control panels, like these little spots right here and here. Those notches just fit in there perfectly when you put a button in. And on these red and blue ones that I had forever, they didn't really have that notch. So I was like, well, that's, these are cheap, you know? Where did I get these cheap things? It just kind of goes a throw in on eBay, getting some other stuff. So then I was like, ah, that's fine. No big deal. Well, when I started putting these, these pell nuts on, they screw right onto the white ones real nicely, but they jam up. So it's like they even have a different tread, if you can, 
but see, you can hardly tell that. This one just has, the tread is tighter. So these pell nuts fit this, but they don't fit that, which is really weird. So ultimately we'll get up to put white buttons on today and I'll have to just order some new buttons. Um, maybe some nicer ones uh, from an actual like arcade shop or something. So, well, that's a uh, control panel talk. All right, control panel attached. Missing those buttons, of course. Uh, we got the monitor in, that's fun. It's missing some side pieces, but I bolted it in really good. And I found this smoked glass back there that actually fits this perfect. Um, I picked up a Century cabinet that looked like a factory conversion to a track and field. And I think that glass came off of it. It's just back there. So still gotta find a bezel uh, to go inside, to go around the monitor. There's a guy on uh, Claw that needs to email me back because I think he's got a gunner. So this is kind of neat. The uh, marquee it came with actually has uh, TNT Amusements. This is games expertly reconditioned by TNT Amusements. I've seen their videos. There is no way that they did what was done to that cabinet. They may have uh, worked on it before and got it looking really nice, but someone butchered it after them. But uh, yeah, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to pull this sticker off, but I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, hi, Todd, uh, Todd Tucky. But uh, maybe uh, y'all would be proud of that one <laughs> instead of what it looked like when I got it. Anyway, so I'm gonna peel that off and uh, get the marquee ready. Well, now we got some progress. I got that TNT amusement sticker off and we got a board set from Raymond Jet uh, several months back, probably about six months ago. And uh, after being in storage, it still looks like it is working like a champ. That long jump, Isn't that awesome? The monitor looks great. This is a monitor Cointech fixed and I hadn't had a chance to plug it in until today either. So the board and the monitor were both you know, a, a pretty fair assessment they were gonna work since I got them both back working. Uh, or I got them both where I got one from Raymond working the board set and then the uh, monitor from uh, Carl over at Cointech. And uh, man, looking sharp, I think. I mean, what do y'all think, guys? This is looking pretty good. I uh, shine those bolts up, they're all rusty and I covered them in acrylic. Man, they're just, Beautiful now. They look like little symbols on the, like from a drum set. They're great. Look at that. Just, I have to say, the Phoenix uh, arcade side art is really nice too. So, this is starting to be, uh, you know, starting to look like a champ. Let's see what progress we get to next time. I'm done for the day. I'm wore out. Morning, everyone. Well, we're back in the uh, back of the Electric Starship Arcade. We're gonna talk about coin doors. Uh, so I need a coin door for our track and field. Uh, I, so let's go back. I thought I had a track and field cabinet once and I didn't. It was uh, just a century cabinet with a track and field logo inside. And it was turned into a surf planet which obviously I saw that and I, was, I thought, oh, I got a track and field cabinet. And I totally forgot the shape of a track and field cabinet. Luckily Galen was very quick to say, that's not a track and field cabinet. Even though I had track and field on the inside and the whole bit. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Dang it, I don't have one. What am I thinking? So I got the one we've been working on in this video, but it came with this <sighs> coin door. And you can see it was sprayed with that garbage. So this coin door may be something for the future. We go get it sandblasted because I just did not have the strength. Uh, but what was really cool was that non-track and filled century cabinet came with an awesome raised logo century coin door. So I'm really excited about that. But then I said, it's just the door, it's not the frame for it. And I thought, well, I'll just pull the frame off of this, you know, here, but it has a different bolt pattern. And I was pretty upset about that, 
So, so that, that cabinet was buried back there, like really far deep in the corner. And I moved a bunch of games around today anyway, so I pulled it out and thank God it still got the frame. So we are gonna have a really cool Century coin door on that. I just gotta obviously do a lot of work to it. Anyway, that's a tiny, teeny tiny update for today. So we're going into the next week here. It's an early Monday. Still Gunner underneath the uh, Mandalorian there. Mandalorian looks like he's protecting him. It's pretty cool. My hands are shaking. I make video shaking one or the other. Anyway, we're on to the tedious process of wiring up our control panel. Our blue and red buttons have come in. Put those on. Uh, I've got the grounds all wired in. I've just put the one and three and two and four player, which is odd. Anyway, we got this JAMA adapter. So we're using a JAMA harness, but they have this really cool adapter. I got it at Arcade Shop. And, uh, you know, it's just following the pin out. So I say tedious, but it's kind of fun. It's I don't know if it's gonna work the first time. You know, you're gonna, typically you wire up a control panel. You're like, all right, well, here I am wiring it up. And then, you know, I'm gonna end up wiring one of them backwards or something like that. But you got your trusty, uh, uh, terminal crimping tool here. This is for terminals that aren't tight enough. You can kind of crimp them on the ends there. And uh, then this is a wire stripper. Anyway, that's what you use. And then you try to make fun of all these different colored wires with different stripes on them. So we'll see if I get it going. I'm, I'm excited, the control panel looks really nice. I like the blue and the red better than those cheap knockoff ones. Uh, yeah, so to be continued. Okay, done all the wiring I'm gonna do for today. Uh, let me tell you what happened. So here's our game is on and here's our wiring. So some confusing stuff. So first of all, the control panel when you're wiring. So I did get a few, I, had, I may have it all right. I haven't checked it out completely yet, but there's a couple things I changed as I work my way through. If you'll notice, control panel, normally you're one player's on this side, but it's two and four and your one player's over here. And you know, y'all probably track and field enthusiasts probably know that and I'm the idiot here, but that's okay. Also, you see how it says it's set uh, free there. Uh, also, if you look back here, I got in the manual and the dip switches, you have to set all these right there, all of them to on to set it to free. So what was really confusing is on this side of the JAMA harness, that black connector there, you see, it's all numbered, and that's pretty cut and dry. On the flip side, it's lettered, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through. Now, on a cheap JAMA harness, like, JAMA harness like that, it literally runs A, B, C, D, all the way through Z without skipping a letter. But on traditional JAMA, uh, it actually skips some letters. So then, when I started wiring, some of these wires were off. I wish I could show you what I mean, but for future reference, if you get a cheap JAMA harness and it's not skipping letters, it's gonna give you a little bit of trouble. So let's see how good we did here as far as wiring this thing up. So I wanna start a four player game. So we're gonna hit four, okay? And this would be player one, so over here, the, the left and right are working, so let's just put, uh, his name will be Abe for easy. Oops, maybe not. Oh, I'm on a player two. I hit the Bs too much. Okay, so player two, his name's gonna be, oh, player two would be here. Oh, see, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so this still let me dial him in. So his name is gonna be Diff. Oh wait, no. I've skipped. I ran out of time. Okay, player four is definitely here. So, okay, this is working right. His just name is gonna be A, B, C. Okay, gosh. All right, so this is player one should be on the bottom. Player two should be on the top. And it's gonna be hard to do with the camera. Let's see. 
Oh, I got a flying start there. Okay, I got it. The no sound is also uh, affecting me here. So, all right, boom, he fired the gun. So this is working, as you can see. So let's try this side. Will it work? Hard to do again with camera. Oh look, the guy got almost to the finish line. Oh, the comeback of ever. Why is he paused? Oh, he won. All right, so that actually works. So let's see, player three and four work. Hurry up, game. Oh wait, I gotta. I guess I gotta cross the finish line. Oh, there we go. All right, man. I'll tell you what. Pretty nifty. I think I got this all working though. The only so player one's game is over. Player two's game is over. Okay. So three should be on this side, and four should be on that side. Do that four right there. So let's see what we got. Yeah, it's totally working for three. And just for fun. Oh. Uh. Oh, four so slow. Because my hand's about wore out from running. All right, here we go. Boom! Finish the race. All right, so. Player four game over. And what does that mean? So player three, so winner is three. So player three is a winner. So three, which is here, gets to do participate in long jump. And I held onto that too long. He went straight up in the air and plopped down. <laughs> That's pretty fun. All right, so I think the buttons are all wired right. I mean, I have to check the player three start button and technically the one player and two player button. Oof, that's a terrible jump too. Well, like I said, it's hard with the phone, so uh, I fouled. All right, I'm pretty excited. Well, at least got the control panel wired up, so that's a plus. All right, well, we're back at the track and I said all right again. May I always say all right. Notice that, guys? So we are back at the track and field cabinet yet uh, again, and I've not done the speakers yet, but that's like one of the last things at this point. So here's what we got. So there's a little crude board here, but that's okay because I got some little line filter in there and a fuse and our power supply, and I hooked this one with the white zip ties goes all the way up to a power switch up there. And then from there, which I already have the marquee on, it goes to the light and then it comes back down here and it hits this little filter and it filters out to the, um, to power, the power supply. And also that 120 filters out and goes to the monitor. So really, really cool. So let's see it turn on with a switch, with the actual switch up there. There goes nothing. So we got our light. Oof, quick glare there. And we got a big wiry mess of coin door. And we got our track and field. And the game is working good. So you can kind of see if I can put my own initials in. Cycle back around there to D, W. All right, and this is gonna be me playing it terribly with one hand. Oh, with no sound, it sucks because you gotta really watch for this guy's little gun. And this is one handed, this is terrible. I'm gonna get blown up. Come on, one hand, oh, one hand on him. And I qualified, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can do one hand uh, high jump and then we'll turn this thing off. One hand high jump, here we go, a long jump. Oh, I don't know if I held it long enough. Ugh. Oh, I fouled anyway, so there you go. 
to the next one. And we gotta do the coin door next. Somehow gotta get a bezel for this thing. And uh, hey, it's definitely shaping up. So here is our raised letter century coin door. And it's pretty rough. I should have took a picture of it before I washed it multiple, multiple times. And hey, this one isn't gonna be perfect. You know, it's just, uh, I'd have to go get it sandblasted or something to make it perfect. Uh, but we're gonna see if we can make it look better anyway. Put a little tape on there to cover up the rejects here. And uh, let's see if we can get it looking better. Oh, finally putting the finishing touches on track and field. Super excited. Because that means we can get this thing to the floor. So we're waiting on this cardboard bezel. I just put it in. Pretty easy to put in. It attaches with a two-way tape up here on these little side pieces. And this piece just kind of lays in the back there. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. Only just one more little piece and this thing is done. We're going to put the plexiglass that's over there. Put it back on. But uh, I'm super excited. Probably have this out here in just a few weeks. We'll be able to rotate it to the floor. All right, well, track and field is finished. It's on the floor. Turn the overhead lights on real quick so we can see the side art, the marquee. The marquee's original, we cleaned that up. You saw that, the PCB's working great. Sounds good, plays good. We got the bezel in finally. And uh, again, that blue just came out really nice. The red tea molding, I think, was a, a good choice there. And you can see the reflection coming off the ground there. Anyway, track and field restore in the books so thank y'all so much for watching this restore i hope y'all enjoyed it hope we uh learned some things um, you know the game's not perfect but it looks great you know and, and especially for where it came as you saw uh if you like this kind of content remember to like and subscribe and uh, we'll do some more we got, got a new halloween video coming out here pretty soon too so we're excited about that so like and subscribe and uh, see you again soon.